Hi everyone, it's Ken here. In the next three videos we're going to be making the gears for this beautiful clock. In this first one we'll be turning the blanks and cutting the gear teeth. In the second video we're going to dive into the cam which is how you program a machine for CNC. And then in the final of the three-part series we're going to actually use CNC to cut the spokes. Before we get started I just want to point out that the image that you're looking at is not my finished clock, it's a digital rendering from my CAD program. John Wilding's book specifies diameters and thicknesses for each of the gears, so I began by cutting out rough circles just using my bandsaw. Uh, make sure they're oversized because you're going to trim them on the lathe. And I also drilled and reamed a tight-fitting hole to hold a dowel pin so that I could relocate uh, each of the gear blank as I moved from the lathe to the mill and back again. The next step is to use the lathe to turn the rough blanks down to their final diameter. But the problem I always run into is how do you mount a thin disc to a lathe? Fortunately, Chris at ClickSpring came up with this idea of making an arbor mounted to a faceplate. Then, using uh, super glue, you can glue the gears right to the arbor and later when you're finished you can apply heat either with a torch and that loosens the glue and the gear comes off. The mistake I made was I used the most powerful glue you could buy and I used way too much of it so I really had to fight to get these things loose. Trust me you can use just a little bit of glue the gear isn't going anywhere. Then I used the dowel pin to make sure that the gear was centered and that little twist against the arbor locks it in place. First I used my lathe just to get the rough blanks down to a measurable circle. Once I did that I took a measurement, decided where I was, and then did the finish cut to bring it down to the final diameter. At this point, it's always my preference, as long as I got something mounted on the lathe, to do some sanding and polishing because, well, the lathe does all the work for you. Some people argue that you're just going to scratch it again later, and that's true, but I find that this makes it easier to do the final polishing. The papers I use are from a company called Micromesh, and they make several different grades. The grade I use for brass is their MX grade, and I do it uh, soaked in mineral spirits. You proceed in order through the various grits, and there are quite a few of them. And as you can see, you can get a very, very nice finish. The next problem I ran into is I have a very little lathe and I had to cut a very, very big gear. That clearly wasn't going to work. Fortunately, if you think about it, a mill is nothing more than a lathe sitting on its side. So by mounting the cutting tool on the x-axis and uh, doing a little bit of clever thinking here, you can actually turn quite a large blank just using your mill as a lathe. Before you can cut the teeth into a gear there are some things that you need to know. The first and most important is how big is the blank that you're starting from. Unfortunately John Wilding specifies this exactly uh, in his book. The next thing you're going to need to know is how deep do I advance the cutter into the blank to get the right tooth profile. Now this is a piece of information that he does not specify. So the first thing I did was I went to the internet and I did a search on cycloidal gear calculators and there are quite a few of them. And they only need some basic information here. The first question they ask is the diametrical pitch in inches. 
which is strange because every cycloidal gear I've ever seen has been done in modules, which is in metric. Fortunately, it's very simple to do the conversion. We know that there are 25.4 millimeters in an inch, so if we're doing a 0.6 module, for example, we simply divide 0.6 into 25.4, which gives us 42.33, and then if we hit the calculate button, that indeed tells us that yes, that is a module of 0.6. And now if you look down here for the tooth height, which is the depth of the cut, it's going to tell you exactly how deep you need to cut. Now what I found for my orrery, which was a module of one, which means that the teeth were quite a bit larger than these, was that these numbers were fine and you could just use them when you're cutting the teeth. But as I started to experiment with some gears for the clock, I found that these were close, but they weren't exactly right. They weren't giving me the full tooth depth. So after watching uh, Chris on the ClickSpring channel, the way he did it was through trial and error. He cut two consecutive teeth going deeper and deeper until he got the right value. So that's what I've ended up doing. To cut the gear teeth, I mounted my fourth axis rotary table to the mill and then took the blank, which is still glued to the arbor, and transferred that to the rotary table. The next step is to visually align the cutter so that its center line is aligned with the center of the gear blank. I use the dowel pin to do that. Then I bring the cutter out to the edge of the gear because I want it to just kiss the surface of the gear. That way I can set my DRO, which is the digital readout on the mill, to zero. Now I coat the edge of the gear with die chem and begin to make successively deeper cuts. The objective here is to keep doing this until the blue die chem between the two teeth disappears. Once the die chem has disappeared, you now can look at your digital readout and it's going to tell you how far in you advance the cutter. And that, of course, is how deep each tooth has to be cut. I wrote a simple G-code program, which is the language of CNC, and all it requires to run are three parameters. The number of teeth, the thickness of the gear, and how deep to advance the cutter and then it runs in a loop until all of the teeth are cut. Cutting the ratchet teeth involves some guesswork on my part. I began by aligning the tip of the cutter with the center line of the gear, and then I moved it out to the edge. The book specifies that the teeth need to be undercut by 5 degrees, and that can be interpreted many different ways, depending on which side of the equator you live on. But what I assumed it meant was to mark where the cutter aligned to the center of the gear. Then I advance the rotary table by five degrees and then drop the cutter down to that five degree point which to me looks like undercutting and then I set that as my zero point for where I was going to cut the teeth. If this isn't what the book meant and someone knows the right way to do it uh, please make a mention in the comments for me. I use the same technique as before to determine the depth of cut. And then I entered those parameters into my G-code program and proceeded to cut the ratchet. The last gear type is the recoil, 
And this one is done like all the others. It doesn't need the five degree undercut. The difference with this one though is that the teeth are very deep. I didn't feel that I could cut them in a single pass, so I simply made multiple passes around the gear until all the teeth were cut to full depth. And here are all the gears with all of their teeth cut. In the next two videos we're going to review the cam and the CNC for cutting the spokes in all of these gears. If you've liked this video please hit the like button and if you'd like to see the subsequent videos on how I build this clock please hit the subscribe. If you're interested in my other projects you can find them at my website which is www.zeman.com. I will see you all soon.